Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples, on a surprisingly lovely Florida Friday. Uh, we had a little storm blow through yesterday. It brought some cool air in behind it. We've got temperatures, I don't know if they're the high 60s, low 70s at least. Humidity's still up there, but not bad. And in typical Naples, Florida tradition, this is going to last for about, I don't know, 37 minutes before it gets hot again. But I'm going to enjoy it while we're here. And uh, what do I have to, I've got a couple of things. We've got some ground to go over uh, before I get into the car. And, and, you know, if I don't go over some of this ground, I'm not going to get some of the complaints about how long it takes to get into the actual car review, so I'm starting to enjoy that. Uh, yeah, apparently in the last video I screwed up between uh, Harry Chapin and Cat Stevens. Uh, you know, I, I guess my hatred of Cat Stevens just took over. I should have known that was Harry Chapin, but the truth is I don't care. They can both go themselves. Uh, neither one of them could hold a candle to Jim Croce, and that's just all I can say on that topic. But uh, I will try to get my Chapins and Cat Stevens more, uh, you know, together for the next time. I don't know what it is about those guys. They just get on my last nerve. Anyway, uh, what else do we have to go over? Uh, it's day, what, 43 of the apocalypse. I suppose it depends where, where you see the start point as, but I'm going to call it day 43. It's as good as any. And uh, things are progressing nicely. Uh, you still can't get paper towels. You still can't get toilet paper, at least unless you're very lucky. Uh, you know, I pick it up anytime I see one, but it's, you know, it, this is the state of the world today that I've become chipper and happy when I find a single roll of paper towels on the shelf. I feel like I've won a victory and uh, that's just absolutely no way to live. Now today I have this 2008 Hummer H2 SUT. Uh, that stands for Sport Utility Truck. And you know while some of you people are out there preparing for this apocalypse by buying uh, bounty rolls and northern toilet paper, I went out and I got myself a vehicle for the apocalypse. And here it is. You know, what formerly was the most hated car in America, at least up until a couple of months ago, I think is now coming into its own. I mean, if you're going to face an apocalypse, are you really wanting to do it in a Prius or an Accord or, uh, you know, even a X5? This is just not the way people roll. If the Lord Humongous had rolled up in an X5 or a Prius, uh, and nobody would have really taken him seriously. So you have to get something that makes a little bit of an impact. Also, apparently for the apocalypse, uh, if the Australians are to be, be believed, you need leather and you need plenty of it. So uh, on top of the Hummer, I've got all kinds of leather coming. I've got straps. I've got those uh, chaps that you wear at the bottom that show your ass. Uh, I've got chains. All of this stuff is on the way. And uh, also some decorations for this Hummer. We're going to have to put some human skulls on it, some uh, welded on bits of metal. Metal, uh, but there's all kinds of accoutrements that you can uh, do to enhance your apocalypse experience uh, without really breaking the bank. So we'll get into that stuff in a minute. Uh, now, the reason I'm going to use this thing for the apocalypse is this. I had a good friend who uh, did some work for us away. He was a very good, very talented guy when uh, prepping the cars. I won't name any names, but uh, well, his name's Todd. Very nice guy, Todd. In fact, the name Todd became a verb to us. He was the guy who would fix our leather seats. And uh, you'd say, oh man, this car needs to be Todded. And you'd call him up and he'd come over and fix him. Uh, but Todd always was a little bit strange. And he became one of these prepper guys, uh, you know, and who's laughing now. But anyway, so he went out to the wilderness. He quit all his, you know, work. He bought some guns and supplies and he's driven out to some base camp and New England somewhere and my plan is this I you know he always said I was welcome so I am gonna load up this Hummer I'm gonna mount the human skulls on it I'm gonna put on all my leather and I'm gonna drive up to New England and shoot him and then I'm gonna take all his stuff and then I will be prepared for the apocalypse so uh, I am absolutely ready to go on that front oh god what else okay um, and the hell with it nobody wants to hear about that anymore we'll get into the truck so this is a 2008 Hummer H2, a very important year for the Hummer because it got a lot of good upgrades. And uh, those are, uh, are going to become apparent as we go. I thought this one had the right poise for the end of the world. You know, they look all right with factory wheels and tires, but I mean, if you're going to be 
uh, the Lord Humongous or the Toe Cutter, then you might as well have big 24 inch wheels like this one has. Unfortunately, it's not supercharged, but we'll see if we can't rectify that before it goes. Uh, you can see with the sport utility truck version of this, it does away with that uh, wagon end that was semi-useful and adds sort of a meaningless little truck box on the back. Uh, but that said, it does look better than the wagon, so it's got that going for it. Uh, also a big spare tire back there and, uh, you know, everything looking pretty nice and sharp. Uh, those lights up on the top are not just for uh, goofiness. They uh, were required because of the height and width of the vehicle. It became almost commercial level. Uh, so they had to put those things up there to meet federal guidelines. And the Hummer is just fascinating to me. And so many, you know, here's the thing. It's easy to make fun of this thing. It really is. If you look at all the videos or uh, the articles that are out about this thing in the last few years, never mind the ones in the beginning where people kind of liked it, uh, everybody just gets off on hating it. It's an easy target, uh, very simple to uh, pick on and, you know, say is ridiculous and uh, ha 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 ha, you know, all very funny stuff. But the truth of it is, you have to hand it to GM for actually building this thing. I mean, is it really any more ridiculous than a Volkswagen New Beetle or a Mini Cooper or any other car which harkens to the car that it's meant to look like? I mean, this thing, it was made to look like that Hummer over there. We're fortunate enough, actually, to have all three Hummers here now. We've got an H3 as well. And this was the original H1, and uh, everybody knows the story with Arnold Schwarzenegger and the invasion of Baghdad and that sort of thing. And this thing was a purpose-built military machine using incredibly advanced sort of high-tech technology that, <clears throat> I don't even know, incredibly advanced high-tech technology. <sighs> Jesus Christ, I need to stop drinking whiskey in the mornings, but it is keeping the coronavirus at bay. And uh, it's also probably why I screwed up the Cat Stevens thing. But anyway, the thing is incredible. I mean, this was made to brave the roughest terrain. It has portal axles. You can see they come in at the top of the wheel. You see where that uh, boot is up there. Uh, that's the actual axle way up high, and it drives gears that drive the wheels, and that way you get more ground clearance. It has inboard brakes. It has, uh, you know, just stuff that makes it a perfect all-terrain military vehicle. And it's overbuilt like a military vehicle should be, and it's bloody uncomfortable like a military vehicle should be. And even though everybody knows these things, they really didn't sell that many of them. I mean, you can't really have a whole GM division based on selling 600 cars a year. It just doesn't make sense. So enter the H2, which GM had to build. And what they did is they uh, took a 2500 HD frame from their pickup trucks. Uh, they took the rear frame from a Tahoe. They modified it. They put in a weird little uh, center connector that was custom for the Hummer. And they made this thing that would... You know, they claimed it would give you what the H1, you know, would, plus a lot of interior comfort. And, and that really isn't true. I mean, it, it, compared to the H1, the H2 is a joke. But that does not mean that it's not a very capable off-roader. I mean, you know, your, your bobcat that you drive around... Uh, uh, a vacant lot. It, it looks like a tank, but it isn't a tank. And that's the same of this. But the Bobcat is still pretty useful. Uh, now, as a four-wheel drive, this thing was terrific and remains terrific. Part of that is because of the angle of attack. Uh, you can see how there's very little overhang in front of those uh, front tires. That means that it can hit an obstacle that's much more steep uh, than your average pickup truck uh, or other four-wheeler that has a lot more in front of the uh, in front of the bumper, same for the rear. Uh, so it does handle that quite well. And, uh, you know, the suspension has been tuned to handle rock crawling, that sort of thing. It's got uh, double wishbones up front. It's got a live axle in the back with a five-link suspension and uh, does handle four-wheeling terrific. And if you look back at the old reviews, your car and drivers, your automobiles, uh, you know, they do all point that out. 
and uh, this is a very, very capable off-roader. So it does have that going for it. Uh, the problem is that it's sort of comical, and you know, it worked great for the first few years when your Brentwood wives would drive them around, but it became a little bit passe. So not only is it hated by the people who always hated it, your eco-weenie environmentalist types who they're going to throw blood on you if you get out of this thing at the local supermarket. They've hated it since the beginning. But now it's hated by people who should actually like it. And uh, that's a shame. By that I mean our detailer, uh, Little Dalton, the semi-retarded guy. You know, I thought when he saw this thing, he would go nuts. And instead he said something like, this is a really stupid, useless truck. And I just thought, man, you know, they have... That just shocks me. I mean, I just thought this was something that would drive him nuts, but instead he hates it as well. So I've decided that I'm going to like it, and I'm going to like it for very good reasons. One of them is it's really the first vehicle that was designed with America, fuck yeah, as a design theme. I mean, there's no question about that. I mean, this is without a doubt, the most excessive, in-your-face, obnoxious thing that ever came out of General Motors, I believe. I mean, it looks ridiculous. And I think that's great, in a way. I mean, you know, they are celebrating all the stuff that, um, you know, that America gets a lot of flack for and that some of the intelligentsia likes to apologize for. Well, fuck them. I mean, this is it. This, you know, take it or leave it. This is what we're all about. And I think there's some beauty to that. Uh, it also is capable it's not just a pretty face or, you know, an unpretty face, depending on your point of view. So it can do both. It can, uh, you know, it can be <clears throat> over the top, silly design, crazy. But at the same time, it has the guts where it counts. So anyway, let's just get into this thing. Okay, now here's something that's a little ridiculous. Uh, being an 08, this one does have the aluminum 6.2 V8, which is terrific. And it increased the uh, tow capacity of these Hummers by like 1,500 pounds, I believe up to 8,000. <clears> but good luck getting a trailer hooked up when you've got this big ridiculous spare tire thing. Uh, in the back. I mean, obviously you're going to have a drop hitch, but even so, uh, you're going to need Stephen Hawking to guide your trailer in between the uh, uh, the spare tire and the hitch. So if you get that done, great. But even after you do that, well, you're not really going to be able to get in the tailgate because to do that, you have to lower this thing, lift up on that, and then swing out this big arm. That's how you get into this uh, bed area. Well, you're never going to do that with a trailer. Anyway, who cares? Okay, here's the beauty of the truck, is they've put this third row seat in it for children. And uh, it's much more useful than the old one, which had the spare tire inside and just one seat. You could probably fit four or five toddlers in here. Uh, also, it's all made out of hosable plastic with little drains. So whatever disgusting thing the children do in there, uh, you know, you're just going to be able to hose it right out and not worry too much about it. Uh, there's also little places, I suspect, yeah, but you can strap them down with ratchet straps or bungees, uh, whatever it needs to keep them nice and safe as you're driving down the road. And of course, an anti-weather cover so they don't have to get rained on. So very nice middle area there for the kids. Now, if you're not content with this as truck space, which frankly, who would be, uh, you can see that that rear window slides all the way down and uh, that becomes this extendable bed. That uh, wall there at the end will actually fold forward, the rear seats fold forward, and it adds room to the uh, bed of the truck so you can actually get some stuff in there. Uh, the downside, like the Chevy Avalanche, if you remember that thing, uh, the downside is, is that it uh, does not incur now into the interior, so, uh, you know, whatever nasty, oily thing you're gonna have in the back of the car, like the, the children, for instance, are now going to be able to uh, emanate into the inside of the cab, which, uh, you know, is your little happy zone where you're not thinking about the apocalypse, you're just enjoying yourself. So, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. You can get in there and do what you need to do, but as a truck, it's pretty useless. Uh, fortunately, as a pretty design, it is pretty cool. You do have to really slam that thing to close it. Probably just needs a little WD. Let's see if we slide that in. Very good. Just the big tow hooks there. Uh, they added silver bumpers for this year. Another big part of um, uh, four wheeling is. Um, 
ground clearance, which this thing does have a tremendous amount of, although they did put in these running boards, which, you know, GM worked really hard to give this thing a lot of ground clearance, and then they put in running boards that really lowered it. So I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, other than most of these things had Whole Foods duty when they came out. Let's have a look under here. So like the uh, original H1, the hood works kind of the same way, although it's more of a flimsy fiberglass thing. And what was the helicopter hooks on the H1 that would allow you to lift it by helicopter are now used to open the hood. But opening the hood is great because there it is, one of the greatest motors and transmissions ever put in a truck, and that is this uh, 6.2 liter LS. It's all aluminum. Uh, got used in the Denali and uh, the Yukon Denali and the Cadillac Escalade, and of course had a lot of Corvette duty, truck duty. 393 horsepower, very, very torquey. Uh, by 08, it's you know, made it to a 680 LE transmission, six speed, very good tranny, <sighs> very good transmission. The handles the torque quite well. Updated the transfer case for 08. And uh, it's just a fantastic drivetrain in this thing. And finally gave the H2 the power that it needed to uh, make things work. So uh, if you're gonna buy an H2, you're probably better off finding an 08 or 09 uh, that has this setup. Yeah, they're all interesting, but uh, the early ones were dogs. Let's see if I can get this down without killing myself. <clears throat> Very nice, and get this guy into place. There's these little fake air boxes. On the real Hummer over there, they're genuine air boxes that do suck in air. On this thing, they're just fake, but they do make a really nice mounting place for human skulls. Oh. Also, if you remember that Lord Humongous vehicle had the two poles in the front to uh, uh, put his tortured hostages on, uh, you do have a front receiver here where you could put a rig like that into and get the same setup going. So, again, this thing is just prepped and ready for the apocalypse. Also, you see the skid plates on the bottom uh, designed to uh, protect the underneath of the car when you're doing some heavy-duty off-roading, and that's another thing the uh, H2 has in droves. Again, what makes it a pretty capable off-roader? Alright, one of the biggest complaints about the H2 when it initially came out was that the interior was crap, and that was a really fair complaint. Uh, I mean, this thing had more parts been, it was like a GM garage sale. I mean, they had air vents from the Pontiac Aztec, they had uh, consoles from the truck, They just everything came off of other GM products. For 08, they didn't do much to the outside, but they sure did make the interior a bit cooler. Uh, it has nice leather seats, and again, these things do fold down so it can become a truck. Uh, it's got uh, rear air conditioning and uh, inputs for the um, uh, the rear entertainment, so your Canadians can be sitting back there watching whatever Canadians watch, the uh, Mackenzie Brothers or uh, hockey or, you know, whatever makes them happy, and they're all going to be pretty chipper back there. Oh, God, I'll give them a break today. Uh, I see the big chrome chunky door handles. Up front, same thing, much nicer materials, much nicer leather. Uh, you know, everything has been updated for this 08 H2 to make it more uh, luxurious and uh, more comfortable place to be. So let's just hop in. The dashboard is different. Just fire it up. That's all pretty traditional. All right, so there's that big 6.2 fire into life. Of course, it beeps at you. Uh, we're gonna have a tire pressure system on. You know, even if I wanted to put tire pressure monitors in this thing, which I don't, uh, our machine won't do a 24 inch wheel, so I have to take it somewhere. Who do we have here? Hopefully not Cat Stevens. Oh God, I'm not even gonna get into the Eagles. Okay, so anyway, here it is. You've got this, uh, what do we have here? A six-spot gauge cluster. Very nice. Nice backlighting. Looks good. Uh, you know, much nicer than the earlier versions. I uh, get my glasses on. Uh, over here, you've got, uh, this will run all your windows down, including the back window. So this will run just the back window. Let's give that a try. Look at that. So now you've got this sort of big open cabin. Man, that works fast, like in an old Corvette. 
get those back up again. All very cool stuff. Uh, here is your headlight control. Here's your interior light control. Lovely. All your power windows. You've got your folding mirrors. Lovely. If you need to get past a obstacle on the side, you've got your heated seats and your memory seats. All very luxurious and lovely brushed aluminum looking stuff. Uh, this giant expanse of dashboard, which is, you know, they got a lot of real estate to fill uh, that, uh, you know, uses cheapy plastic, but it's not that bad. It's not as bad as the first Hummers and uh, seems to be holding together better than a lot of GM products. Uh, you have the steering wheel, leather, nickel looking trim with, uh, you know, you got your radio controls here, your cruise controls here, all very nice. Uh, these are gear changes here behind it. You see that? That is actually paddle shifters where, uh, you know, for any reason you could bang your way through the gears, which just seems silly in a vehicle like this. But, yeah, anyway, there it is. Uh, over here you've got, um, we've got an analog clock for reasons I can't even begin to imagine. I mean, it just, uh, what are we in, an Infiniti or a Jaguar? I mean, this just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, they could have at least made it look like a chronograph to make it more sporting. Uh, you've got uh, this sort of touchscreen satellite radio navigation uh, also gives you your camera if you need it. A nice uh, upgrade for this year. Has Bluetooth. Lovely. Uh, here's your transfer f uh, case controls. You can, you know, four high, four high lock, four low lock. Uh, you can also lock the differential uh, using that button there. If you get into any kind of issues, you can uh, uh, hit that if you're going to be trailering, and that is a low-speed traction control that you can turn on and off to help you navigate the rock crawling. Uh, here's a climate control down here. This is great. This is the shifter for this thing. Looks more like how you'd apply throttle to a uh, an aircraft carrier or something, but you know here it is inside this uh, commercial or you know user level truck. Kind <laughs> of interesting, cheap chrome ringed cup holders that my detailer didn't bother to polish up. I mean, why would he? Why would he? There's people to text. So, I mean, that's the thing about these snowflakes. They're always friggin' texting someone. Uh, up here you've got a compass in the rearview mirror. It's self-dimming. Uh, I don't know if it has OnStar. I hope not. Yeah, it does. There's all the OnStar crap. There you can see it. Yeah. you got a big power sunroof. Which is quite nice for the apocalypse thing, because now you can poke your head out the top like in a real military Hummer and uh, RPG people to death, so that works out pretty good. Uh, storage, not going to be an issue. You've got a big uh, glove box over there. You've got this giant place here where you're going to be putting all kinds of stuff. You can get anything you want in there. Uh, not quite like a paratrooper AK, but still, uh, your weapons uh, storage is in great shape. Let's go for a spin. Is leaving for high. I wish I had uh, a friend of mine. This Prius just blew up. Life. He swears he's gonna fix it. I wish it were here. I'd put a tire up on top of it just for fun. And you can immediately feel the torque of your engine in this thing. You know, this is ridiculous. Look at this wide, flat windshield. These ridiculous low windows. Again, all meant to mimic the original Hummer, which is made. For, we got a rabbit under there. Be nice if rabbits ate birds or roosters, but uh, anyway, it's all it just makes the visibility terrible, uh, you know, in their attempt to mimic uh, the military vehicle. But nah, you know, what are you gonna do? Oh, and it does have the aerodynamic uh, qualities of a brick. That thing, the college hunks movers, are probably more aerodynamic than this thing. Gonna slow me down. I can just go into the grass. I can go anywhere with this thing. Uh, it is very, very agile uh, off road, much more so than on road. But you know, the on road qualities are not terrible. It has nice centering feel. Uh, again, you got great torque out of the uh, the V8, so uh, gets up to speed pretty quick. You know, again, the thing's almost 7,000 pounds. I don't know what they were thinking, putting kind of a low horsepower aid in it at first. And now we can drive around and really piss people off. Uh, you know, when they look at this thing on the street, uh, they they just give you these really filthy looks. Uh, I asked a couple of friends, I asked Tracy, my girlfriend, I said, well, what's the first thing you think of when you see a Hummer going down the road? And her answer was, dick. Anyway, I, you know, what kind of dick?
thing. No, the dick would be driving it. And I said, okay, that, yeah, makes sense. And then I asked Life what he thought of it. And he said it's a poser vehicle that lacks all the H1 qualities and it was made so that dumb fucks could show off to other dumb fucks. And, you know, as eloquent as that is, I think it's cruel. I don't think it's exactly right. I mean, the thing is a pretty capable off-roader. Uh, I won't tell you what Al said. He, of course, got into revolting crap. And let's see if this thing has any kind of turning radius. I could just drive over that one series. Yeah, I bet you're flying. Okay, so the turning radius... Eh, yeah, not the best, but at least I didn't have to make a three-point turn just to do a U-turn. Let's hammer it. Okay, not extremely rewarding in terms of breakneck acceleration, but again, way, way better than what it was. Uh, the uh, This drivetrain really did help the thing out. Uh, for having ridiculous wheels and tires on it, they actually track and feel pretty good. Uh, I don't know how long that's gonna last, but for the moment they do. And uh, there, there again was sort of the point of this H1, uh, sorry, H2 was to, yeah, you know, be a more roadworthy, comfortable version of the uh, of the original Hummer that would sell and actually make money for the company and you know turn Hummer into a brand that could compete with Jeep and Land Rover as you know a great four-wheel drive alternative and obviously that didn't last you know the recession came along the environmentalists threw blood on everybody uh, it just wasn't something that uh, people were going to allow to happen so uh, you know after a few years I, I want to say 2010 was the last year for Hummer and uh, it's, it's kind of a shame. I think a Japanese or a Chinese company tried to buy it, uh, but uh, that didn't work out. So I don't know what they're doing with them now. Uh, AM General did build them for a while. Anyway, I'm rambling, rambling, rambling. Uh, so here it is. I've got my Apocalypse uh, machine. I, I have to now get it ready to go. A lot of stuff coming for that. And I uh, can't wait to uh, get started. Uh, I'm going to have to get some sort of cream or soft because leather chafes me a little bit. But, um, uh, but anyway, it's on the way. I'll be ready. And thank you guys for having a look. We really appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back uh, early next week with something else. Take care, and look at that, no roosters today, right when I could turn any one of them into a rooster pancake. Smart birds, no peacocks. Eh, we'll keep an eye out. Maybe I can find out where their den is. And... Anyway, okay, thanks guys for having a look, and we'll see you at the next one. Take care.